Well, hey, Calvary. Just enjoying this gorgeous Tuesday afternoon in late March and in my hammock. Maybe some of you would call this a hammock, but I believe hammock is uh, the correct uh, enunciation. Regardless, I wanted to share another devotional with you guys. You know, as uh, we're in full down or full lockdown um, quarantine, um, I thought a little bit about um, how Paul uh, must have felt in his house arrest. If you guys didn't know this, uh, some of the epistles that Paul wrote, for sure the epistle to the Ephesians, uh, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon, uh, we know for a fact uh, that he wrote that in house arrest while he was in prison in Rome. We know that according to Acts chapter 28. Uh, even in his greetings and his, and his final salutations, he mentions his, in, his chains or his imprisonment. And it got me thinking a little bit about when you read those verses, it gives it a little bit of a different kind of flavor when you realize he was in prison, when he was in house arrest. And even though right now we're in quarantine, we're in lockdown, you know, sometimes our state of mind, our stinking thinking, or just how we view life maybe is challenged a little bit because of the freedoms we once enjoyed that are no longer ours. And yet when you read from Paul, uh, you, you, you kind of see from a different angle. Let me just share from you a few verses. This is from Philemon. This is what Paul says. And I, verse six, and I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective. He's praying for other people while he's in prison and he's sharing about how they can be better witnesses and how he continues on saying, become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. And he's saying the way that we become more effective in our, in our witnesses, in our ministry, in our, in our sharing our faith is first and foremost realizing the richness we have in Christ already currently today, whether we're in quarantine, whether we're in home or out at our workplaces or we're not in the quarantine, we get to enjoy all the freedoms that we once enjoyed even last week. He's saying those are, that those contexts don't change the richness we have the full knowledge. He wrote that from prison. Again, he writes this from the book of Colossians, I'm sorry, Philippians chapter four. And many of you guys know this verse, but remember he's in house arrest, so check this out. Chapter four, verse four. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. And this is the famous verse that a lot of us know. Do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer, there's that word again, and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then check this out. In the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So even in our state of quarantine, even in our state where um, there's some uncertainty right now in the world, he says the peace of God, if we, if we pray, if we keep our mind on him, if we recognize the riches and fullness that we have in Christ Jesus, he goes, even the peace that surpasses even the darkest of circumstances, all circumstances, he says it will guard our hearts and our minds. And then last verse I want to share from you is from Ephesians chapter 3, starting in verse 17. Paul writing, writing again from house arrest says this, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and height, and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. We, guys, we need strength to even comprehend the limitless, boundless love of God. That's how grand, that's how great, how powerful his love is for us. He goes on to verse 20. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. You know, if you guys have some time uh, this week, think about this, read through one of those epistles. Philemon's only one chapter. Colossians, Ephesians, uh, Philippians, they're all very short. And, and think about the context that Paul is writing this from, very, from, from lockdown, basically. He's in, under arrest. 
Uh, he, there were some privileges he could in, enjoy, um, and there were some that he couldn't. He was always bound, chained to Roman guard. Um, let me leave you with these, with this challenge, and then uh, maybe some questions for your small groups if you guys get together this week. One of the challenges is when don't limit yourself to your context. What I mean by that is, think about all that God's given you, the fullness, the knowledge of all the good things that God has blessed us with through His Son, and praise Him for that. Praise Him from your couch, praise Him from your room, praise Him from wherever you are today, and, and spend time just thanking God that that doesn't change regardless of our, certain, our, our current situation. So, so offer up, as, as he says in Philippians, rejoice in all things. Then again, I said rejoice because what we've been given is greater than anything we can ever experience, any hardship we can endure. So praise God for the blessings he gives us. And then uh, questions for your small groups is one is, you notice the theme of prayer throughout those scriptures I just shared with you. Every one was about a prayer. Even the last one was a, was a benediction. He ended with amen, was a prayer. He was praying for the Ephesians. And so I would say, one is, how's your prayer life? Who are you praying for? Um, praying for an effective witness, even during circumstances like this. So one is, how's your prayer life? Who are you praying for? Um, and then the last one I would say is, spend some time in a hammock in the beautiful outside and comprehend with strength. Try it really hard. Use all of your energy to comprehend just how grand God's love is for you. And out of that, may you minister, may you be encouraged, and may you be a great witness of that love as it overflows from your heart into the neighbors, your family, and friends around you. I hope you guys get a chance to get outside and enjoy this beautiful weather. More importantly, I hope you know that you are tremendously loved by God. We'll see you next time, guys.